All right, guys, uh, I just wanted to uh, create a quick uh, little tutorial video uh, kind of explaining uh, pseudocode a little more in depth uh, than, than maybe uh, your reading material uh, provides. Um, and, and, and I have a really a very important topic uh, that you guys get as much experience uh, as you can with pseudocode uh, because pseudocode is, is very powerful. It, it basically enables you uh, to, to design software uh, kind of at an abstract level so that you can take uh, your pseudocode design here and apply it to uh, any language that's really out there on the market. Uh, and this is because pseudocode has the three basic elements that, that all programming languages have out there, and that's sequential, uh, that's repetition, and that's a, a decision structure. Uh, so I thought it would be a, a really good uh, idea to go through uh, a student uh, that we have in class, his name's Aaron Webb, and he uh, he posted a, a really good uh, peanut butter and jelly uh, kind of pseudocode example uh, using some basic commands and using some uh, some pseudocode commands, uh, and that's fine if you know you know the basic language, um, but you know say he used C plus plus instead, or let's say he used uh, Fortran commands instead. Uh, this would require uh, that you know that these other these other languages, and you know, in order to avoid any kind of confusion, I basically wanted to take that example and convert it directly to a pseudocode only uh, example. And all of these pseudocode uh, commands that we're going to go over here are all mentioned in your reading. Um, and you know, I, I really wish uh, there there could be like a pseudocode simulator, uh, pseudocode uh, simulating. Uh, a compiler that would take your that would take your kind of pseudocode and and try to compile it like like we do with real code right any any program you write in basic and C++ and Fortran whatever it is uh, Java uh, they all need to go through a compiler and these compilers look for uh, very specific keywords being used very specific ways uh, so that's why I keep harping and all and all of these discussion boards uh, you know, there's a couple of bugs. There's a couple of things that that aren't exactly right, uh, and it's because I want I want to get through to you guys that when you develop software, you have to develop it uh, with an eye for detail. Every every command, even even these pseudocode commands, I'm 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 going to be your pseudocode compiler. Uh, so when I look at these commands, I need everything to be uh, to be correct in order to get you guys kind of used to the compiling environment. I need all of these. Uh, I need all of the stuff that I'm going to show you uh, needs to be in your pseudocode, uh, and it basically needs to be done uh, exactly as as your book kind of describes uh, the, the pseudocode. Okay, so let's just kind of go over uh, Aaron's little PB and J algorithm that that I've converted to uh, to pseudocode, and I want you guys to get very familiar uh, with the pseudocode here. Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice is that every pseudocode uh, example, every pseudocode, uh, what we're going to call pseudocode program, has, and, and every program in the real world, has what's called a main module, okay? So anytime you guys um, uh, post a pseudocode uh, example, I need you guys to make sure that uh, the main module is the first thing I see, okay? Because that's, in, in the real world, uh, that's the way it works also. Um, so make sure you include a main module, and in it, with every module, you need to outline, okay, where where does the end of this main module end? And that's where this um, this what I what I call an end tag, uh, the the end pseudocode tag comes in handy, and you basically just throw in a word called end, and you state what what exactly are you ending here? And in this case, uh, we're ending our uh, main module, right? Um, and and you basically want to do this for all modules. So for example, there's a make PB and make PB module for make peanut butter, you know, and, and jelly sandwich example. Uh, make PB module, and again at the end of this module, I put end make PB module. Okay, so uh, for all these examples, make sure that you guys uh, let me know which uh, which modules you're talking about, and make sure you include uh, this end this end tag for each of the modules. Um, I'm, I'm not seeing that uh, in quite a few of these examples and that's very important. Okay, second thing is uh, the main module for now, um, the main module needs to declare basically 
uh, all, all global variables. Okay, so what, what are global variables? Uh, these, these are basically uh, your input and output data types that the program is going to use for values, right? These are, these are your input and output data types that th that's what makes this program useful is that you don't have these, these hard-coded numbers in the program. You're actually able to uh, take input from a user, store it into a data type, such as PB Choice here, uh, such as the number of sandwiches that you want to you wanna create, such as do you want to add jelly to the sandwich. All, all of these are, are inputs. And what, what this enables you to do is to declare these data type variables so that the program can use them to store values, okay? And in order to do this, you use this declare keyword, okay? This is a very specific pseudocode, uh, pseudocode command called declare. So anytime you guys want uh, need to declare data types, uh, make sure you use this de declare keyword. So once you use declare, you give it a, a data type name. You give the data type a name. Uh, make sure it's a very intuitive and don't give me X, Y, Z, uh, P, Q, R. Uh, these are all kind of algebra uh, names that are that are kind of worthless because when the next software engineer comes in to look at your program, uh, he needs to look at these data types and know exactly uh, what that, that variable is used for, okay? So that's that's the, the next thing that the declare needs to use is a name. And this needs to be one word. It can't be multiple words. Don't put spaces in there. Uh, and then the last thing is what kind of, what's the data type of that variable? So you see the declare, you see the as, then after the as comes the actual uh, variable, the data type used for each one of those variables. And so for PB choice, you know, this is going to be um, what, what the, the user is being, uh, what the user is entering into the system if they want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and they're going to type in either yes or no. Uh, and yes or no is a string, which is why we declare it as a string. Uh, the number of sandwiches they're going to enter in, that's an actual numeric value. Uh, I'm assuming you can't make a half a sandwich, so we're just going to assume that we need whole numbers here. Uh, and because of that, we're, we're going to declare that as an integer uh, or a real. I think your, your book uses the word real, which is fine. So integer or real is fine there. The add jelly to sandwich, there you're going to say yes or no. Again, that's going to be uh, an actual string, right? So, anytime you declare variables, make sure um, it's of this format using good uh, variable names, okay? Uh, or your your pseudocode compiler, aka me, is gonna is gonna complain. <laughs> Which compilers do complain? Trust me, compilers like to complain a lot. So I figure uh, if you get used to me complaining, then then you'll just translate it to. Uh, the real world when you actually try to implement a program uh, that same compiler is going to complain about the same uh, the same things okay okay the next uh, interesting thing uh, that we want to look at look at here uh, okay let, 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 let's take a step back okay so computers are sequential okay because computers are sequential you need to realize that computers start at the main module once they get into the main module, they're going to execute it from the top to the bottom. Okay, so it's going to it's going to start on this line. It's going to declare that variable. Go to the next line. It's going to declare that variable in memory. Go to this line. It's going to declare that variable in memory, and then we're going to get to this line. Right. This is what's called an iterative uh, loop control structure. Okay, and this is kind of a special one. This is a uh, what's called a do uh, while loop and you'll see in a second while I don't put while at the top um, because you can reverse this you could have while up here uh, and and the end one here but instead I'm putting do up here and while down here so what that's telling that's what that's telling the computer is do whatever's in between the do and the while I want you to keep uh, repeating this process until this this conditional logic is met. So I want you to keep looping until PB choice while PB choice is equal to yes. So if, if the user ever enters in no or enters in bananas, enters in anything but yes, right, it's going to jump out of this loop. It's a very specific loop. It will only loop until this conditional uh, this conditional statement uh, is met, okay? 
So this is your, your iterative control structure. Okay. Um, so let's go, let's go inside the do loop. Remember, we're going line by line, right? Line by line, we've hit the do loop. So it's going to go into the do loop, right? Because the first, the first condition is just automatically true, okay? We go into the do loop. And I, I noticed that a lot of you guys like to use the keyword uh, write uh, whenever you're, you're trying to display things. And I, and I think your book uh, might do that also. Uh, but I would caution against using the word write just because write can also mean write to disk, right? Uh, <laughs> right, right? <laughs> so when you're using the word, try to avoid using the word write unless you're actually... Uh, writing to disk, for example. If you're if you're displaying a message, use the keyword uh, display. This is just going to make it a lot easier on the next software engineer that's that's looking at your code here. Um, he's not going to be confused when you say write, and he's going to know. Oh, he he wants you to actually display this uh, to the screen. Okay, so try to use the keyword display instead of uh, instead of write, and that's just my preference. Okay, so once we display this to the screen. Now the user understands, oh, I'm supposed to type in yes or no. And there's this keyword called input. That's a very specific pseudocode command, uh, and that basically tells it to take any, take all keyboard input uh, until, the, until the, the user presses the enter key and take that keyboard input and put it into this variable called pbchoice. So if the, the user types in bananas, guess what? pbchoice is going to be equal to bananas in memory. Uh, however, we're hoping that by telling the user to enter yes or no here, uh, that the user is actually going to type in uh, yes or no. Okay, so let's assume that the user types in yes. Okay, once the user types in uh, their PB choice, right, and it's stored in this variable, now we're going to run one of this conditional uh, this conditional logic here, uh, and this checks to see is what the user entered in is it equal to the string called yes and notice that uh, yes is a string so PB choice better be a string too and if we if we go up here and we look it's declared as a string so uh, your pseudocode compiler isn't gonna freak out here it's comparing a string to a string and everything's okay and it's using this conditional uh, this conditional uh, operator here okay so is this string equal to this string and if the answer is yes okay within this if condition statement anytime this evaluates the true it's going to go to the statement directly underneath of it okay if this evaluates to false it skips over this if statement and it's gonna go go down and hit this while statement okay so there's something else you can do here is you can actually use and I just want to cover this real briefly an else okay and so if you were to use an else here uh, if this were to evaluate to false it's gonna execute whatever's in uh, whatever is under this else guy so so this is your 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 conditional logic and if if you remember from your flow charts and your checkpoint one example uh, you have two conditions you have a true condition and a false condition that can be run. Okay, in this example, we just need the true condition. We don't need the false condition because if it's false, then it's just going to run uh, this while loop here, and it's going to the the while loop PB choice is going to be equal to no, right? And it's just going to end the main module. the the whole The whole program is just going to stop uh, at that point. So we don't need to implement a uh, a, a false uh, a false conditional statement. We just need to say if PB choice is equal to yes then make sure you call this this make PB module right and then once this make PB module which we're gonna go over in a second probably in part two because I'm running out of time uh, once this PB module is called since it's equal to yes it's gonna loop back around and and do the same thing again okay so that is in a nutshell uh, my explanation of of Aaron Webb's kind of main uh, main module uh, of his algorithm so let's uh, that, that's the end of part one, and in part two, I'm going to talk about the make PB module. So please watch that also.